Hello and thank you for tuning in. My name is James Williams and I am with the Southern California News Group. Stage 4 of the Overwatch League is in full swing and the Pacific Division is getting interesting when you look at the standings. The Valiant did defeat the Gladiators in the battle for LA and as a result it at the top of the division standings. Following the victory, I sat down and talked to two of the players on the Valiant team, Scott Custa Kennedy and Indy Space Helper. I won't hold this intro any longer. Let's jump right into my conversation with Custa. A big win for you guys. Yeah. I wrote down some questions, but I'll get to that in a minute. I mean, a lot of people kind of had you considered as the underdog, despite you guys being undefeated. What are your thoughts on, on I mean, the, the broadcasters, everyone, gladiators, gladiators, gladiators. This should be an easy win, na na na. Everyone's been, um, like, I, I, I don't disagree. Like, Gladiators have been playing really well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they 100% showed up today. Like, which, okay. but, like, the more important thing is that we punished them for that, right? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people have been um, underrating us for a really long time. Right. They went 7 3, they made stage playoffs, they just scraped by it. Like, mm -hmm. then we, we get to this stage, they're, they're 4 0, but they haven't played any good teams. Right. And then they're coming up against Gladiators, everyone under four. Like, it's actually crazy. Um, how like you go to like the power rankings of like casters, Reddit, anyone, mm -hmm. we're still fifth yeah. or sixth around mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And which is crazy thing is we're pretty much second on the standings. Right. And we're number one in seed division and we're still winning, like so hopefully this match will turn some heads, but definitely. It was a good match. Uh, so I mean like even with that in mind, what what was the mindset coming in for you guys and what what was the strategy? Because whatever you guys did worked out yeah. in your guys' favor. Especially, the first map was the draw. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the draw, and, and was that more of a filling out process? Because I believe they were undefeated on that map, like 7-0, I think. So, we are terrible at this map. Mm -hmm. and Blizzard this, World, right? This Blizzard World, uh -huh. yeah. So, we are terrible at Blizzard World. They're really good at it. So, for us, after we came out of that map, we got a draw, and we're like, okay, good job, guys, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, like, that was fine. Um, I think the more interesting thing was the strat that they threw at us. Mm -hmm. um, no one's really played like they like they play. They have uh, the Lucio Moira and just uh, Brigitte and just mm -hmm. run at you. Mm -hmm. uh, we were not prepared for that. We'd never played against that. So it was good for the team to adapt as the series went on. You saw we right. like, kept making adaptations. Mm -hmm. uh, most of that goes for Fate. Fate's an amazing main mm -hmm. tank, amazing call, and you knew exactly what we needed to do. So. There was a lot of people in the crowd, the broadcasters, Soon, 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 soon. Tell me about soon. Soon, soon is uh, I'm sure coming into the stage of uh, a widow that a lot of people would say mm -hmm. probably not one of the better widows in the league, and that's really going to hurt us this stage. It definitely like uh, was a concern for us, but soon, honestly, in the last week or two, soon's been just popping off. He's been mm -hmm. he's been consistent. He's been strong, and he's if he's taken it to these top widows, like Shawful is a top widow, right. and he just took it to him. So it was it was really impressive by soon, and I hope he keeps performing because. We're going to need him in the playoffs. And a lot of people would also say you guys didn't have the strongest schedule coming in. I believe all four of your wins prior to this were against the bottom four teams. Yeah. Um, Including Boston, who's everyone considering a bottom yeah, tier team right. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, talk about, let's, <laughs> let's talk about Boston for a second. Yeah. Do you, still, do you consider them a bottom four team? I mean, we saw what they were able to do in the last stage. They were in the, play, they were in the finals of yeah. stage three. They're Wait. playing like a bottom four team. That's that's their problem right now. Um, I don't think it's you don't need to shoot credit. They are playing with mm -hmm. like They still have incredible players, right. but this is like the the problem when you have um, the diversity of Overwatch and you have players that can't adjust. Right, uh, okay. so they have a couple of players that can't play other things to the best level, and that's sort of what makes like us as a team really mm -hmm. strong. Is we have players that can fill, adjust, and do anything, and that's what makes us like almost meta proof. Maybe we're not the best at anything. Like we can all agree, Boston were. One of the best, maybe they lost right. New York, but at the dive, the last meta. Mm -hmm. But coming in here, they just they can't seem to put their finger on it. So maybe that's coaching, maybe that's players, who knows? But it's definitely struggling. I'm I'm new to the whole Overwatch world, but obviously coming into stage four, there was the meta, the meta, the meta, the meta. Yeah. How did you guys adjust? Because obviously, whatever you guys did, unlike maybe someone like Boston, didn't work. That. What is it about the meta that you guys? I mean, it didn't seem like it's been much of a problem for you guys. There's, at, at least from what we see on Twitch and 
out in the arena. As we were coming into, we we made sure everyone covered our bases. Like we came in, like we had a lot of different players mm-hmm. practice Brigitte. Like because Brigitte is not like a a one person role. Right. It's like she shifts in and out between which player needs to play mm-hmm. based on the strategy. So we made sure everyone practiced. We made sure everyone knew exactly could play the roles that they were going to need to play mm-hmm. potentially. So um, something that we did as well is we we fiddle around with her early. Um, okay. There's a lot of teams that just sort of came in when Brigitte came into the meta mm-hmm. and they just sort of said, we're going to try and beat her. And then if someone works out how to make her, make her useful, mm-hmm. then we'll play it. But that's why you're seeing players like, uh, teams like Dallas Fuel thriving mm-hmm. because they had nothing else to lose. Let's pick up Brigitte. Yeah. Let's, let's play a show around it. Mickey put a lot of time in it. He's playing incredibly on that hero. And they honestly, we, we scrimmed them today and they, they have such a good grasp on how to play Brigitte. So I think they'll be a front runner for the stage playoffs. Okay. And uh, give me a second here. You guys have two days off. Yeah. And then you guys have New York. New York. That'll be a good <laughs> so, so you get the undefeated streak to five. Yeah. But you're going to be challenged once again. <laughs> if, if people thought the Gladiators were going to be your biggest challenge, yeah. it doesn't take very long for you guys to run into New York. What are your thoughts? I... Uh, Winning today makes it a lot easier because mm-hmm. um, this win, because we're fighting for our number one seed right. in the Pacific Division, mm-hmm. that gives us three wins over Gladiators at this point, which almost secures it for us, mm-hmm. unless we go on some awful run and yeah, they go right. on some crazy tear. Right, right, right. Um, we're pretty much secured at this point, which mm-hmm. is really nice. So I think New York, win or lose, is going to be a feeling out period because at the end of the day, we need to beat New York to win this league. Right. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, so we uh, we're going into this match and gonna gonna be really focused on uh, just playing our best and like showing what we have and then seeing where we stand. Okay. It'll be a great great idea to like play them, see where we stand. Okay, do we get four zero? Do we go three one? <laughs> do we win four zero? Do we? Who knows? Like right, right, right. the result is interesting no matter what happens. Okay. So that's gonna be important for us. Cool. And uh, speaking of New York. They're going to be hosting the final, more or less. It's going to be in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think about Brooklyn? Have you ever been there? I've, what, what do you I've think of that being York, an advantage for, for uh, the XL? I went to New York once mm-hmm. for like four days, five days. Okay. Did a lot of the New York things. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited. It's, it's a place that has a lot of hype. It's good to go to the East Coast mm-hmm. for this kind of final. Give those kind of fans the opportunity. Right. Also, a lot of Europeans... It's a lot easier to go to New York than okay. it is to LA. So I think it's going to bring in a lot of new fans, change the scenery. It's going to be exciting. Even if we don't make the grand finals, I'm right. definitely going. So. Cool, definitely. So how does that work out? I guess I'm just kind of asking for myself. How would that work out for an Overwatch player? Let's say you guys don't advance that far. Are you paying out of your own pocket? Or I, I think the all... I, I've like talked to my own. And like, I think they said they'll front us they're yeah, like, or they'll, they'll pay for us. Right. But I don't know if we're getting any special treatment or yeah, if Blizzard right. is organizing anything that'll be like... The teams or the players that want to come, right. like, represent mm. the league. Right, 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 right. They haven't okay. really defined anything like that yet, I don't think. Gotcha. Well, I would assume the goal, obviously, is still to... <laughs> yeah. I'd love to stand <laughs> on the stage. That's where I'd love to be <laughs> in that arena. Play so. your way in, right? Yeah. Um, saw some things on Twitter, for, on the Valiant Twitter. You guys had a, a beach trip, it seemed like. Yeah, me... Tell uh, me about, me about the beach. How was that for you? It was good. But yeah, we had a day off, um, and the content guys were like, hey, you guys want to do anything? Mm-hmm. Um... Indy and uh, Brady wanted to go to the beach, mm-hmm. explore Venice Beach. They'd never been, just sort of see the touristy okay. things, have gotcha. some fun. I tagged along. Just it was it was it was a good fun time. Mm-hmm. Just something you know, blow up a bit of time. What is a? Uh, would you say the cameras are always in your guys' face when you guys do things like that? Even just going to the beach, around around the office when you guys are practicing. Is there ever like? A moment where maybe you guys don't have the camera in your well, face? Well, <laughs> I, I think the org has, like, set out, like, clear guidelines. Is like, there'll never be apartment uh, cameras at the apartments. Uh, okay. Apartments. That is a there place that they will never be. We are allowed to go out without mm. content, but content people are always imploring us, if you go out, we'll come with you. We'll pay for stuff. Right. We'll pay for everything. Oh, okay. Wow. As long as you, <laughs> as long as you do the camera. As long as you let us take the camera right. and let us make content out of it. Oh. So, it's like, it's like the trade-off, right? Like, when we right, went to right. Venice Beach, like, they pay for everything. They yeah. organize everything. Okay. Everything happens. So it makes it easier, but it's also nice to sometimes get out on your own, right? right. Like, and not have cameras everywhere. So are there times where they're like, we'll pay, we'll done that? And you're like, no, like, we're, this is just like a team thing. Like, we just want to... I don't think we get out of the house enough for that to be a problem, honestly. Okay. So <laughs> un- unfortunately, during the league, it's, it's really hard to find those gotcha. days to do your own thing. So. And uh, I don't want to have your mind go too far ahead, but I do want to ask, what are your plans for the summer um, after, for the off season, after the, the finals wrap up and stuff? 
I was looking forward to the four months, and then I was uh, I was actually thinking about it, and then you know we got uh, so we got the finals, mm-hmm. and then there's All Stars, which I don't know if I'll be a part of. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then we have World Cup, and then we have all these things. So there's a million things in the middle right. that are gonna have to take up time. But I'm he- I am heading back to Australia. I want to head back to my friends in Toronto every now and then uh, for a, at least a short period of time. So there's a there's a bunch of things that I want to do, mm. but yeah, it's as much as four months off. It's Right. There's gonna be a lot of stuff like that you're gonna have to fill. So and so, as a team, you know, we gotta come so, back. So Overwatch probably isn't the top priority. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It goes from number one down to very low yeah, okay. for, for a short period of time, which is important, right? Yeah, sort of fair, get fair that enough. Break off. Um, what has the support been like? I may have asked you this before in our last interview. What has the support been like for um, from your family and, and from your country back home? It's yeah, honestly, it's been amazing. My my family, my parents, are my number one fans. Mm-hmm. Um, they they love cheering me on, and you know, I have a brother who like understands okay. Overwatch, and he's played right. a lot of. I was gonna say, do the parents understand? My, my parents don't have any idea, okay. what's going on, but my brother <laughs> can sort of cool cool them in at times and that kind of stuff. But uh, the the fans are amazing. Mm-hmm. They love. I I always get a lot of messages being like, "Hey, I'm Australian. I love that you represent our country right, and right. that kind of stuff." Which which is an amazing thing you, when you have like a lot of people saying that you know I, I'm. I'm proud to support you, and I'm supporting you because you're Australian. Gotcha. I was going to get you out of here, but I do have one other question. No worries. That entrance you guys had. Tell me a little bit about that. What, what was your your thought on that? Because I don't I don't know how many people were expecting that, because there was some girl behind me. I was sitting up here at the very yeah. top. She's like, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Like, I was like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what's going no, on. Nobody but... knows what's going on. Yeah, it was like, uh, so we have a, a Bella uh-huh, person, uh-huh. so I think... Uh, we're looking to like work with these people as just like an org side okay. uh, more so cool fun quirky mm-hmm. interesting thing mm-hmm. to come out you know it's something different right like it always yeah, keeps yeah, everyone toast because like entrances have sort of died off right mm-hmm. for the most part like mm-hmm. probably for the best uh, it, was, it was getting a little <laughs> ridiculous at times but it, it was it was fun um, but doing something like that very formal kind of interesting mm-hmm. so Cool. Can't Good deal. I I thought it worked well with the with the team and the logo and everything. Especially you guys for the Battle of LA, right? Like yeah. it's such a big big hype mo- uh, event. So and uh, actually, speaking of that too, there's so many things I can yeah. go off here. The Battle of LA. What? I'm I'm sure you're probably friends with a lot of the guys on Gladiators. Bits maybe. and pieces. Yeah. But um, what? What does the Battle of LA mean to you? To the team? Is that something leading up to this week? You guys are sitting there jumping up and down saying the Battle of LA, or is it just another day? Uh, it's definitely a bigger day because the crowds are always huge. There's always so much like so much happening. Um, it's only, it's my second one, but okay. it's been super hot. Um, on top of that, today's match was like super important right. because it was for us. It was consolidating, uh, consolidating ourselves as first seed. Mm-hmm. But gladiators needed to win. Like this right. was like if now the gladiators have lost, it's probably that that's out of the cards for them. While with us, if we had lost it, we still had places to go. So we were nervous, but I'm sure we weren't as nervous as gladiators right. were. And um. Again, sticking with the mindset you guys have during practice and whatnot, what is, how constant is that in your guys' head? The division standing, specific division winning, this that. It's 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 always in the back of mind. Mm-hmm. Um, something that we've been a lot better at about is like uh, just being like breathe, calm down, just play like you're doing streams. Right. Like it's it's we 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 we've, we've played this map a million times. We've we we know exactly the strats we want to do. Just go to work, right? So. Mm-hmm. And so you guys had a you said you had a scrimmage with Dallas today. Yeah. Have you guys ever scrimmaged with LA or is that with with the Gladiators or is that like completely how uh, it's like? I think we ha- I think we have. Um, you, you generally don't scrim the teams that you're going to play in the next like two okay. weeks or something yeah, like that, right, right? Like a bit of mm-hmm. teething time so that they don't have extra content for gotcha, you gotcha, to play. Gotcha. Okay, makes sense. And and when you guys are doing those, are you guys assuming you guys probably aren't doing like the same maps you guys are doing out there they're probably are they way different no uh, we, do, we do all the same maps like it's okay. hard because like so like we come into this the scrimmage and we're like we're playing these four maps in our next match right, right, right. they're like we're playing these four maps in our next match and it's like uh, all right we have these overlaps we'll do one of your maps we'll do one of our maps gotcha okay so because you need sense. to learn all the maps anyway right, 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 right. so okay. you can generally play those maps cool and that wraps up the interview i had with scott custa kennedy he was always a great interview now we move along to the conversation I had with his teammate, Space, of the LA Valiant. He was another player I had the opportunity to talk to after the team's win over the Gladiators. I did ask him some of the same questions that I did with Scott, but as you see, we'll kind of change things up, change gears, and we start talking about a few other things like the language barrier and the communication amongst the various teams in, in the league, and then we'll also get a chance to talk to him about what it would mean to him 
for the LA, LA Valiant to reach the grand final in the league and have the chance to play in his home state of New York. Would would you say that was a a pretty big win out there? I, yeah. I like I was telling uh, Scott, uh, a lot of people didn't have you guys winning that yeah, one. Yeah. Like, would you consider that an upset of some sort? Um. Uh, yeah, honestly, mm-hmm. I think so. Uh, Gladiators are like really strong this mm-hmm. stage four. Their last two ma- uh, last two wins were really convincing. Yeah. So we were mm-hmm. a little worried coming into this match, but um, we like took practice really seriously mm-hmm. and you know focused up, tried to make everything work. And on stage today, we just played like how we usually do, communicate really well, and focus as a team. And you know we pulled it out. Cool. Um. Your guys' uh, strength and schedule, huh. a lot of people would say, eh, they played, yeah, they had four wins, yeah. you guys were undefeated coming in, yeah. but against the bottom four teams, uh-huh. uh, this was probably, in a lot of people's eyes, your toughest challenge. Yeah. What do you think uh, that this win will, will say, uh, or actually, what will this win do for you guys going forward, especially... Uh, you guys do have two days off, uh, but you guys got New York yeah, coming up. New York. <laughs> so what does this win do uh, kind of leading up to that yeah. that New York match? Uh, I mean, hopefully it's a good uh, motivational booster mm-hmm. for all of us, you know, because we have always been looked at as like a tier two team mm-hmm. or, you know, mm-hmm. like not strong enough to take on batters and like we get lucky in our schedules. But, you know, we try to look past that and focus on mm-hmm. the bigger goal. Um, this next match is obviously going to be our hardest so right. far. You know, we're going to try and make it as competitive as possible and try and get that win. So, like, that would really prove to everybody that we are something to mess with. Like, you can't look down on us. Mm-hmm. But I think um, this win has, like, definitely changed a lot of people's perspective on us. Gotcha. You know, Gladiators is definitely one of the best teams, and beating them is, like, convincingly is good for us. So Okay. And I was uh, sitting out in the stands watching you guys play. Mm. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the fans and stuff were yelling, soon, 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 soon. It seems like he had a pretty big night. What, yeah. what, what, what kind of impact does he have, and what impact did he have tonight for you guys in that win? Uh, Soon is like the most amazing hit scan player. I think mm-hmm. he's definitely slept on a lot by okay. a lot of other players. Um, just like coming into the league, Soon was looked at as like a tracer one trick, okay. and you know he couldn't play anything else than that. But Soon like had to make a decision coming this meta. Like he had to practice Widow and McCree and Brigette and like mm-hmm. get good at those heroes. And soon put in a lot of work, like, over these past few stages to just get better and better. And, like, now he's hanging with the top Widows and, you know, like, dominating Shirt right, for right. this match. Just, like, shut him down. And, you know, when we come into these matches, like, having soon, knowing that he's going to play consistent mm-hmm. like that is just great for us. And, you know, pocketing him and, like, making him feel comfortable in the matches, like, he's a really good carry for us. So, I'm really happy he's, like, on our roster and feeling confident. Cool. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you're from New York? Yeah. Uh, you guys will be wh- whether you whether you guys advance and you guys are playing yeah, yeah, yeah. on stage in the finals or whatever. Are you gonna be there in New York? Um, of course. Either yeah, way, right. what what is that like having the the finals? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's great. Like uh, I know, like that's my my new goal. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, it was just like to be good and to make a name for myself in the league. Right. But like now, it's really focusing on getting to the finals mm-hmm. and like to be able to play at home and. Like all my friends and family are out there, they definitely come to watch to see mm-hmm. me play, and yeah, that'd be that'd be really good for me. And that's something that I want to get, like just to be able to show people that, like you know, I could play gotcha. at home and I support New York. <laughs> you know, that's where I'm from, so that'd be dope. What kind of <laughs> what kind of pressure do you think you may? Let's say you do advance. Yeah. How, how um. How many times do you think that phone will be ringing for, <laughs> for tickets and, and different yeah, things? Yeah, a, a lot. Like, all, all the homies hit me up all the time, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, we watch online, you know, we want to watch in person, you know, my mom's in New York, my dad's right. in New York, my sisters, you know, they'd all come out and watch and support me, and, you know, I know my, my boss would obviously help hook them up right. and get them out there, you know, like, as motivation for me, mm-hmm. so that's definitely something that I want just to, just to get done, you know, to make finals and play in New York. Um, and so when you did... I mean, did you have any? How far in it did you know any further in advance that it was going to be in New York? Yeah, then, did. or did yeah, you just yeah, find yeah, out like yeah, everybody yeah. else? Once it was on the the post, like uh-huh. what's the post about right, it, right. everybody found out. Basically, yeah. they kept it really secret. And what went through your mind, like when you you're like, whoa! <laughs> I thought we were just yeah. going to be back here. <laughs> yeah, it was huge. I was like, I didn't expect it to be in mm-hmm. New York at all, but like, um, 
I think the support for New York Excel, like the mm-hmm. team, is really hype in New York, and you know they're doing really well. So right. I think a good place for it to be is New York, and hopefully uh, we get to face New York in New York. That's like gotcha. what I want personally is just to beat them there in New York. <laughs> and um, what was I gonna ask you? I don't know. I forgot what I was gonna ask you, but but I know. You guys had a trip to the beach not not too yeah, long ago. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. I'm I'm assuming I've I've never really been outside uh, of California. Uh, so I know New York's close to the water. Yeah. You guys have beaches and stuff. How how different is that well, out I, here compared to out there? Like for me personally, um, I have a lot of family out here mm-hmm. that okay. like uh, when I grew up they lived in New York mm-hmm. and they moved out here. Oh, okay. Uh, for like work and stuff. So. I usually visit here almost every, oh, okay. every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm. So it's I, just I have, yeah, it's nothing yeah. Really okay, to gotcha, me, gotcha. The beach. I've been there like three or four times with family. Mm-hmm. But, like, it was really nice to get a break from Overwatch League. Mm-hmm. To just go out to the beach right, and right. You know, like think about the memories that I've had there with my family, uh, and like like Agilities might not have been there before. Mm-hmm. And Scott, I think Scott's been there before, but you know it was nice to just hang out and chill and like get a break from the league for once and like it was like a nice mental re- refresh, but. Mm-hmm. It was really nothing new to me because, you know, I've, gotcha. I got a lot of people out here that support me. And, um, again, the only reason why I knew you guys went to the beach is because I saw it on on Twitter. Yeah. You guys did a video. Yeah. Um, and same thing I asked Scott. Seems like, maybe not all the time, but more often than not, you guys are always in some in front of some sort of camera mm-hmm. or yeah. in front of a crowd or mm-hmm. an audience. What is it like, if ever, do you guys ever get some downtime to just, like, relax? And chill, yeah. What I mean, are you guys doing when you guys are usually just hanging out and just away from the camera, camera's off, just yeah, hanging yeah. out? I think, uh, like, as a team, if mm-hmm. the camera's off, you know, we're still working hard. Um, there's a lot of times where we'll go over strats or, like, okay. if there's something really serious we have to talk about, you know, off camera, we all just group up together and talk about it as a team, you know, get through problems, whatever mm-hmm. we have to do. And then, like, during our individual downtime... Uh, most of us, we like to work out like okay. as a team. Usually, mm-hmm. we can go work out during in the morning or late at night. Some of us will go. Uh, we eat out together, like cool. as as a team. Sometimes uh, go to the pool. You know whatever we want to mm-hmm. do. And sometimes we just grind and stream. You know gotcha. do our own thing. But like, I think uh, it's it's nice to have cameras around sometimes mm-hmm. just to keep like the vibe like professional. Gotcha, gotcha. I know that yeah, right. Yeah, there's something on you. You, know, you have to keep working hard, mm-hmm. but also it's really nice to get like downtime, just chill with your homies, like make friends as a team. You know? Gotcha. Do you feel like maybe you have to put a mask on or be very <laughs> different when you are yeah. like in front of a camera, yeah, like sometimes oh, professional fade, like, like yeah, yeah, like you know sometimes like uh, during practice, mm-hmm. you know, there's no cameras in the room, you know, we're just chilling, you know, we we make a lot of jokes, right, 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 sometimes right. Sometimes it'd be like. Like stuff that'd be bad men. Yeah, and other you. teams, you know, right. and then when the characters like, oh, you know, yeah. fucking, oh, they're great. <laughs> they're stuff on the game, you know, you gotta do that. So, yeah, it is like that sometimes, mm-hmm. but uh, it's a nice balance, you know, to always have there. And um, the meta, the stage four, whatever you want to call it, whatever is different about this yeah. time around. When you look at a team like Boston, who mm-hmm. was in the playoffs yeah, with yeah, you guys, yeah. and now they're they're no, struggling a little bit. Yeah. What are your thoughts on a team like Boston maybe on the decline in this stage and you're starting to see some of those other teams, what Houston, Dallas, yeah, kind of yeah. popping up on the top? What What are your thoughts on stage four and just how different it is as far as where the teams are at? I think uh, this stage has definitely changed the game completely. Okay. Like the meta, uh, the old meta was definitely just dive, like mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. dive, um, which Boston was the master of. They were the second best next right. to New York. But I think since the meta switched so rapidly, you know, Stryker and Gamsu didn't have time to mm-hmm. practice Reinhardt and okay. Brigette. And, you know, Stryker plays fair now. It's mm-hmm. a completely different hero. So I think, uh, like, more of the old teams like Houston, uh, us, you know, Dallas, mm-hmm. you know, these guys have already played tanks. Okay. You know, they're already used to that. So, like, when, when that meta came up, they're like, oh, okay, just one new hero, mm-hmm. Brigette, mm-hmm. and then everybody else is good. Well, like, for a team like Boston, it was like, oh, this is completely different. Right. You know, this is a new meta. So, you know, they have to learn meta, like, mm-hmm. which will take time, you know, learn new heroes, but I think they'll put the work in, okay. and Striker's already doing amazingly, like, well and fair, he was hanging with the Julie right. in our match, and Gamsu's a good run, so I think, you know, Boston will definitely bounce back, but uh, a new meta is always hard for some teams, you know, it'll change everything. Um, who, what, what are uh, some of the characters that you like playing, whether mm-hmm. it's during competition or yeah. just 
I mean, do you really get, do you really play Overwatch for fun anymore? <laughs> is, is that like even uh, a, a thing still? I mean. <laughs> not really. Uh, I usually play like arcade to warm up. Like okay. I hit deathmatch, you know, mm-hmm. just warm up. Uh, I run into like some fans, like people say, oh my God, space, you know, like the casual <laughs> right. players. You know, that, that's chill sometimes, I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but never really casually, like whenever I play competitive now, mm-hmm. it's like no more rank, it's always to practice. You know, okay. I always have a goal in mind. Right, I gotta right. do this to get better. Mm-hmm. You know, that's always something I'm focusing on. But I mainly just I'm I'm trying to become one of the players that can play everything mm-hmm. in my role. Mm-hmm. So I'm focusing on, you know, Diva, Zarya, mm-hmm. Hog, and Brigette, and you know, if I have to learn a DPS, I'll right. learn DPS. So like my goal as a player is to be flexible no matter what happens, you know, like, it's like, oh my god, speak, you need right. to learn Lucio, I'm like, I'm on it, you know, yeah, I'm, right. working, I'm working hard to learn Lucio, that's like, one of my goals as a player. What would you do yeah, if, yeah. if you have to pick up a new character and they're like, hey, you gotta learn how to yeah. play Junkrat? Right. My thing is definitely, you know, coming into any game, because mm-hmm. I've always been a competitive person, okay. you know, a competitive player, um, definitely watch the pros like Mm -hmm, watch mm -hmm. the streamers watch the pros you know like what i'll do if i have to learn a new hero i'll say like you know who's good at this hero right i'll find out if it's uh junk rat you know i'll watch jake stream Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something like that and then i'll be like what does he do and how can i do that and you know i'll watch scrims you know practice watch these players you know figure out what other people do like youtube videos you know okay gotcha you got to find out and then you have to apply it to yourself you know you, you get into a game you play and you mm-hmm. learn. Just focus like, what could I have done better? You know, what did that player do better? And stuff like that is just like, you always there's always something for you to work on, mm-hmm. and you just have to keep your mind to it. I think like, players will usually hate on someone one tricking, mm-hmm. but like if you're trying your hardest and you know you're trying to get better, I don't see anything wrong with one tricking because like basically as a as a player myself, when I started the game. Um, my friend told me like Zarya is really strong. You know, play Zarya. Right. And I was bad at Zarya at first, but like I, okay. I watched streamers and I was like, this is how they play. You know, how can I mm-hmm, do this? Mm-hmm. And that just like came like I basically right. got the game from that. Okay. And uh, I only played Zarya. I I only played Zarya, and I just <laughs> I kept carrying all my games. You know, I was beating. I ended up beating streamers that I watch you know, mm, while okay. playing. You know, right. I was like nervous. Like, yeah. <laughs> like pro players like, the right. game, like oh my god, I watch the stream all the time. You know, that stuff's like really great and I think any player can do that you know anybody okay. can do that just learn cool um same thing I told Scott I don't want to have you look too far ahead or throw you off uh, of your mindset but when the the finals are set and done you you have your time in uh, New York yeah what, what are your plans for the summer? What are you planning to do during those four months before the season starts up again? Well, hopefully, uh, I'm definitely trying out for World Cup. Okay. So I, I want to make that because I know that's going to be during Overwatch League downtime. Mm-hmm. Uh, the World Cup's going to start. So I definitely want to make Team USA. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm still focusing after Overwatch League. You know, I'm focusing on that. Uh, if I don't make it, I'll most likely just, you know, take my time and, mm-hmm. like, get a break, hang out with some family, cool. friends, you know, do all that. And then... Uh, just focus on like playing as much as possible while okay. also balancing a break, you know, because you definitely have to keep your mentality strong coming into stage uh, mm-hmm. next season. So, okay, uh, what is the process for being on the World Cup team? I uh, mean, a lot of people would probably think, "Oh, you're a pro. You yeah, yeah. you just tell me you want to be on the team. I'll put you <laughs> on the team." Yeah. It doesn't sound like that's the case. No, no, no. What What is the process even for someone like you to have to? Um, well, since there's a community lead. Mm-hmm. Uh, the head coach and then the right, GM, right, right, right. you know, basically those three combined mm-hmm. uh, decide equally on you know who okay. they want to play. It's like a voting system, kind yeah, of, right? Basically. Okay. And you know, there's trials. There's mm-hmm. open trials. I'm pretty sure. Okay. You know, you get in touch with the head coach or whatever. Like, hey, mm-hmm. I want to try out. You know, they'll get you in there. Gotcha. I don't think it matters who you are. You know, mm-hmm. if you got a name for yourself or not, you know, they'll try you out. Right. So a lot of us, like the pros and some non-pros, will come in and try out. You know, whoever plays best, whoever shows up and like a team player you know they'll make it and yeah. that's my goal I feel like there won't be any bias you know there's usually not any bias mm-hmm. to any players so that's what I'm looking forward to um, a lot of people would say some of the top players or are, are from overseas or international a lot of what Overwatch League is it's mm-hmm. a global game yeah, yeah. Um, so even coming in and when I was like trying to figure out who is who and what's what and who's from where yeah. I didn't I haven't I, you're really the first U.S. player I've uh, talked to. Yeah. So who are some of the other top U.S. U.S. players, and who yeah. are some other people maybe within the league that we may see on the World Cup team? Uh, I definitely look at the Houston Outlaws. Okay. Know, they have 
the majority of U.S. players, okay. and then San Francisco Shock. I'm pretty sure has U.S. players. You know, I think I don't know if I don't know if I'm right about this, mm-hmm. but I think there's only like 19 or 20 okay. Americans. Yeah, it seems like League. there's like very few, yeah, <laughs> very few, very few. You know, a lot of the teams are mixed up. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some full Korean teams. Right, right, right. Most of the other teams are just mixed up in like Americans, Koreans, mm-hmm. French players. You know, everyone but like. Uh, the top of the U.S. is pretty small. Okay. I think coming season two, uh, there will be a lot more U.S. players, you know, like a lot of players that didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to prove how they're worth, you know, how good they are, and a lot of players that are like motivated to go pro now. So I think uh, okay. there will be more U.S. players next year for sure, and like a lot of talent to grow off of. Is uh, agility? Is he U.S. or He's Canadian? He's Canadian. Okay, yeah. he's Canadian. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, like I'm just trying to like think like okay, yeah, agility. Yeah, yeah. No, so not even him. Um, what else did I have for you? Ah, the language barrier. What it, you're like you said, there's like teams that are just like yeah, all, Korean all Korean, or but you're one of those teams where it's like, is but does Bunny he speak English? He's on no, your team, right? He, yeah, he, he's on our team. Uh, mm-hmm. His English is not good. It's because uh, he came from all right. Korean teams mm-hmm. in the past. Okay, so he's still learning English. Gotcha. You know, all basically all the Korean players are learning English because mm-hmm. you know we live in LA, right, right, right. so they have to. But like just to get around, let yeah, alone yeah, my communicating yeah, with you or playing, yeah, it's like just to get yeah, around. They have to learn, so I, most of them take like private classes okay. to learn English. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think uh, you know as we play or like while we're just chilling, mm-hmm. you know we just teach them English. You know they'll ask like, "What does this mean?" Yeah. You know? <laughs> and like sometimes like they'll say stuff because we have a translator. Mm-hmm. They'll be like. Uh, talking to us, having a conversation with us, and they'll be like, uh-huh. oh, I don't know what to say. And they'll talk to the translator. Mm-hmm. And the other times, they'll just be like, Oh, no, 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 I don't need help. And yeah, like, I, I got this one. <laughs> yeah, I got it. It's like, I can say this. Like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know? So, like, yeah, like, it's a fun process for them, mm-hmm. and they, they want to learn English, most of the Korean players. Is there any effort maybe on your guys' part, or has anyone maybe told you, Hey, while they're trying to learn your language, yeah. do you guys try to learn their language at all? Oh, uh, we were actually going to do that. Mm-hmm. We were going to try and learn Korean, but it felt like our CEO felt like it would take too gotcha. much time from us. You right. know, we needed more time to Makes sense. have off time mm-hmm. you know, and break. But I'm pretty sure there are some players that are trying to learn mm-hmm. Korean or other languages You know, just to be able to talk to their teammates gotcha. easier. And like sometimes there's uh, like small words like... Uh, what can I say? Like... Uh, when a hero is low, mm-hmm. like they say, like, in Korean, it's, like, Winston P, like, as in low health. So, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we'll call them like that, you know, just to make okay. sure, like, our Koreans know and, like, to focus on the heroes. But, like, there are little things that we do to help everyone communicate better. Just even being around them and stuff, are there, like, any particular words maybe that you've picked on or you know, like, uh, like is there Korean, a word or two? Like, uh, SEO is obviously hello. Okay. And then uh, one that we talk about is... Uh, Saita, which is like mm-hmm. awesome or like okay. really good, um, cool. and it's like when we when we're just messing around in practice. Mm-hmm. Like if I get a my fate explained it to me, mm-hmm. it was like oh Saita is when you get a fat grab. Oh Saita, like <laughs> very very good. You know, so like we'll mess around mm-hmm. in Korean and like we'll teach them stuff in English. Cool. You know, it's just like a fun process for everybody. Awesome man, thank you for yeah, your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A special thank you once again to Custa and Space for sitting down to talk to me. Um, As I mentioned earlier, the Grand Finals will be held at the Barclays Center from July 27th through the 28th, a two-day event. And as of today, June 1st, the event is officially sold out. Fans were able to purchase tickets, and more than 20,000 did so, and that makes it the largest eSport event to be held in that venue. During the playoffs, which will be held in L.A., Six teams will battle it out and try to punch their ticket to Brooklyn. The two teams that do reach it to the Grand Finals will compete for a share of a $1.4 million prize pool, the league trophy, and earn the right to call themselves the league's inaugural champion. In other league news, 18 players from the two divisions will compete in the 2018 All-Star Game. The starting lineup for each team will be decided by the fans' vote along with the league's players, coaches, and staff. The link can be found in the description. That is all from me. My name is James Williams of the Southern California News Group. Thank you guys for checking out the podcast. I appreciate you guys listening. Hopefully, as I'm going to more of these esports events, you'll start hearing more interviews, and we'll get some more things up for you guys. Thank you again for tuning in. Check back in the same place, and I'll have some more content for you guys in the future. Stay tuned.